So when you want to customize your working time, I recommend that go to the change working time option of your project ribbon to do that. And depending on what your current view is, okay, naturally the different calendars will be displayed. Or in other words, if I'm just looking at my, let's say if my current view is my Gantt chart and I click on my change working time, you would be able to find only your project calendar or your base calendars listed by default. But if my view currently is my resource sheet, okay, and I've just selected the resource I here, and I click on the calendar, that is the change working time option here, you would be able to see I am looking at the calendar of that particular resource. So depending on, so depending on which calendar you are looking at, or which view you are looking at, currently your uh, change working time will ideally change. So these are some of the differences you might want to know. So when we talk about base calendar, as you know, it is more something to do with a city or a work location where you can just set the working time and the exceptions more at a very, very high level. But when you look at a resource calendar, they are ideally based on one of those base calendars what you have ideally created. So you might say an analyst is working as per India or analyst is working as per US, where US and India are generally created as the base calendars. So the last option which I just wanted to demonstrate here is how to share the calendars what you have created across projects. Because you would have created a, a calendar called uh, uh, India or US or UK or you would have customized your standard calendars. How do you share it? So there is an option called organizer. So let me show you where you can find it. On your file backstage, you can find there is an option called info. Under info, there's a button called organizer. This organizer will allow you to manipulate the template file as well as you can copy your calendars across multiple projects. In my current mission, I just opened only one active project. So let me uh, create another sample project. So you can find there are two projects which I have ideally opened. Okay? So you can see there are two projects ideally I have. One is project three, another is sample plus. So let's say I have created a research calendar. Okay, I hope all of you do know. I created a base calendar called research. Due to some reason, I would like to share this research calendar to others. So the way to do it is you need to click on File, Info, Organizer. And you can see there are several tabs here. All these tabs represent the different components of your project plan. I'm going to select calendars here. You can see on my sample plan, the research calendar which we created is available. So if I want to share this research calendar to another uh, project, I can just open the other project plan and I can just select the other project here and I can just do a copy. So which means the other project plan will now have my research calendar. So the, uh, the other user need not spend time in creating these calendars. But the only catch here is since you have done a copy, any change you are making in your research calendar will not get automatically synchronized with your other calendars. So you need to copy it again and again whenever you are trying to manipulate these calendars. So just to uh, help you to understand those four calendars, let me summarize them. The first one is what we call as a base calendar. So the base calendar that has provided by Microsoft Project was or the standard, the night shift, and the 24 hours. You are always uh, free to create your own new base calendar through the change working time option. So the base calendar represents the default working time of your resources. They are ideally used as a project calendar or the task calendar or resource calendar also. A simple example could be if I have a team who is working across three locations, let's say Chennai, Pune, and Kolkata, and each location has a different working time. Naturally, you need to create three base calendars because each base calendar maps to one location um, of your team. Let's say if all the three cities, you have the same working time, same holidays, one base calendar is enough in this particular scenario. So once you've created a base calendar, visualize that those calendars are like a library of all calendars. Okay. So now you, need, you can pick and choose which base calendar should be used as a default calendar for your 
next calendar called the project calendar. So the project calendar can be one of those base calendars that are used for scheduling your activities in project 2010. So one of the simple example is when you, when you have a high level estimate prepared and when you prepare a high level plan, you might want most of your activities to be done from offshore or from one city. So I prefer that um, tie that base calendar of that particular city to the project calendar because project can automatically schedule all those activities as per your project calendar. The next one which I discussed was the resource calendar. I hope you know a resource calendar just implies that it is defines the working time and the non-working days of a specific individual. So a resource calendar is ideally based on the base calendar and uh, it is very, very specific to a particular resource. So naturally every resource can have their own working time and their own holidays which we have seen that it can be configured through the working time and their exceptions. Okay. And the last one which you, we discussed was the task calendar. You might want to uh, schedule a task as per a specific working time. A simple example could be a downtime activity. You might want this downtime to happen only during a non-working hours or after office hours or only during a weekend. But by default, when I try to assign a resource to a task, based on the resource availability, only a task will be scheduled. So you might want the task to be scheduled not as per resource availability, but using a different calendar like a weekend calendar or a, you know, after working time calendar or something like that. Then you go for the last calendar called as task calendar. So a task calendar is also one of the base calendars. In our example, we said uh, the research calendar can be used as the task calendar. So which means whether the resource was available or not, naturally that task was scheduled as per the resource calendar one day. Okay. So just to summarize, I think these are the points what we discussed. Calendars are very, very important because they define the working time at a product level, at a resource level, and at a task level also. So there are four types of calendars we said. One is called a base, one is called a project, the third one is called resource, and the last one is called task calendar. Always remember when a when project is scheduling the activity, it will follow a bottom-up approach. It will first look at a task calendar. If not available, it will move on to the next calendar called resource. If the resource calendar is not available, it will move on to the project calendar that will have the default calendar for your project. In order to change the working time or to set exceptions, you can need to go to the change working time option of your project ribbon to do that. And finally, you make use of the organizer option on your backstage to either rename a calendar, to copy a calendar, or to delete any of the base calendars which you created. Okay. So the next one which is coming up next uh, week is uh, on September 12th, 3 p.m. We are going to have a, a live interactive radio show, which means Ideally, you will be asking questions, okay? But naturally, when you ask questions, I'll be able to answer it live. So you can either post those questions during the program or let me go back to my... So on your tech gig, you should be able to find... Uh, um, when you try to register, there is an option available on the bottom where you can post your questions also. So you can post any questions or any queries you ideally have in terms of your current project. So we will try to compile all those questions and that will be answered as a part of next week's webinar. Okay. So you can also write to me. So this is the email address. So webradio at .com. So you can post your questions. You can attach your schedules which have those problems or which you would like to troubleshoot. So we'll try to compile all those things and we'll try to understand it. So the third session of the series will happen on 4th October. That is when we are going to talk about how to create a work breakdown structure, how to identify activities and document it, and we will also talk about the task dependencies in terms of Project 2010.